Can you beat Beerus in a fight? Yes. I am the biggest fan ever. I just would love a picture. He's you on drugs. No He's on me. drugs. Happy birthday to you. Yeah! Happy birthday, dear John and Savannah. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Yeah! Let me tell you something, chump. Yeah. All right. What the fuck is going oh, on there? Fuck it. Oh shit. <laughs> I think you had one too many concussions if you're gonna fight me. <laughs> I'm Luis and I'm Nearest. Always floss after a meal. Always. Because if you don't, the bacteria will cry your teeth. Big bang! Oh, yeah! Five hours later. All right, guys, I just got to my hotel room right now. I haven't even taken three steps inside the room. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how this place looks. This is the first time I'm checking this place out too. Look at this, man. This looks amazing. So I've arrived at the Omni Mandalay Hotel and this place looks really, really nice, man. What a view. Look at that bed, nice king size bed. Got my bag right there. I just walked in, so I have no idea like how nice this room is. This room is so nice. And the first person that I bumped into downstairs was Christopher Sabbath. I can't believe it. It was him and it was another gentleman that were just walking right by and I was like, wait a minute, is that Christopher Sabbath? I'm going ahead and just check this out. Look at this view. Welcome to Texas. Everything's bigger than Texas. Look at this, man, this place looks massive. This is nice. What a view. Paid lots of money for this hotel room, man. So it's definitely gonna be worth it. So definitely wanna go on ahead and give you guys a little bit of a, of a room tour here. Bed looks, I mean, pretty big. Let me see here. Nice and comfy, nice and cushy. Let's go on ahead and check out the, uh, the bathroom, see what we got here. All right, I better have like a massive jacuzzi in here. Nope, just the regular tub. All right, it's all good. Bathroom looks pretty all right. I mean, nothing extraordinary out of the, uh, the norm here. Toilet. What up? It's me. All right, so let's go on ahead and just uh, check the rest of this. I oh, we have coffee here. All right, cool. This is what's really fascinating. I mean, we have Pringles. I have Snickers. Yo, M and M's. It's on. What is this? Rice Krispie treats. Oh, it's done. What is this? What is this? They gave us. What is this? Water. All right, cool. <laughs> I, I was just missing some champagne bottles, but uh, that'll do, pig. That'll do. Okay, so I was supposed to actually be here with my friend Emish, but he ended up showing up late at the airport and now we ended up boarding different flights. He's actually a few hours behind and I just got done talking to Master Media. He's somewhere wandering around here within the hotel, within the convention. I have no idea. He's ninjing it around. I hope he doesn't get caught, but I got Opai Senpai hitting me up and I'm in this hotel. I'm stuck. I'm wondering what to do. I'm hungry. I'm starving. I'm thirsty. I'm horny and I'm trying to figure out like, damn, what do I do? So as I'm waiting on Emish, I have no idea when he's going to arrive because it could be from now 
to like maybe 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock from now, and it's about eight o'clock right now, so I have to wait about, I would say two, three hours for him to actually arrive, let alone catching a taxi to get here. So in the meantime, I might end up jumping out of this window and seeing if I can survive, because you know, I'm gonna think I have superpowers, but I don't know if I can make it, so it's actually pretty deep. I'm on the 18th floor, so this is gonna be crazy. I have no idea what the night is gonna look like right now, because there are different people trying to do different things in different areas, and I don't know what exactly people want to do per se. Um, I think what I'm going to end up doing is probably eating something, settling in, getting all my shit unpacked for tomorrow, because as of this recording, this is Thursday. And this is actually the night prior to the big opening to KameaCon, so it's going to be fun. This room is lit, and uh, I don't know, man. I better get here, otherwise there's going to be a lot of shenanigans happening in this hotel room. Three hours later. Okay, so you guys will not believe what just happened downstairs. So. This guy finally got here. I don't know. It took him like forever oh, hey. to get here. So, hi, uh, yeah, hi, hi, hi. I'm the guy that he left at the airport. Yeah, I didn't leave nobody. This guy, I told him, I was like, yo, you guys, you have to be here at a certain time, whatever. But you guys won't believe this. And I have a witness to this. So, it's myself, Master, Daquan, hanging out with Christopher Sabin, uh, Brian Drummond, the owners of Command Con, Chris. It was pretty cool. And now this guy's putting on some pants. Are you for real? Uh, well, here's the thing. Like, we're hanging out with people I didn't even realize. I didn't know that there were big people. Up until he like, didn't know. He was like, no, that, no, I thought they were regular people. And I'm talking to like the regular people. And until then I he heard his voice. And oh, he owns Kamehameha. This guy's, he spent a nine hundred dollar. I don't know. It's too much for me. So, so I here's here's the rundown, right? So we're all in a squad. Massar just wanders off at a bar somewhere. Daquan actually ends up hooking up with a female. Just. Out of the blue, making a fried out chicken. Of the brew. Out of out of the brew, making a fried chicken reference, and just going off like the way she just said it. She's like, "Oh, we're gonna go to my car." So he breaks off. Master is somewhere. I don't even know where he is. Everyone else is in West Bubblefuck Land, and right now it's I think it's about eleven o'clock, so midnight our time back at, back on the East Coast. So I'm waiting for him to put on his shoes so we can get some pizza or whatever the hell's out here. We can eat some fried rats that are whole lot of live gang shit. Whole lot of live gang pizza. 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 It's fucking cold. Shut up. It's hot and it's cold. The airplane. I'm gonna. Okay. You gonna rant? Not now, but I'm. Gonna, this is not the we'll place to back. rant. When we come back, I'm gonna tell you guys my fucking day. I'm, 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 I'm gonna explain my story to you guys. This video is getting demonetized. And I'm gonna fucking rant. And this is only Thursday. This is not even like the we actual event. We just got here. I just and got like, here. and everything is like just breaking off. People are hooking oh, up with people. Oh. It's crazy. There might be another terminal power. Oh, we have, a, we have a story for that one. So this guy, man, manages to go to 7-Eleven and <laughs> he gets to it. I don't, I, don't even, I don't even know he's what he has. With, like, his whole, like, they're on, like, a business trip. They're all getting fucking destroyed outside. There's, like, a million Corona bottles on the yeah. fucking table. Wait, who is? And they're asking me about YouTube. The guy I met down here. Dude. So they're getting destroyed and we're not? Something's wrong. Something's you think about all these niggas right now. I mean, the, the staircase is pretty right. small, actually. Dude, I'm so... Pissed, I didn't say hi to Ryu. I want to say, send me my son, Ryo-san. I am the biggest fan ever. I just would love a picture. He's on drugs. No He's on me. drugs. All right, so Master Media and Amateur Live, they're talking about eating the gazelle. The lion has spotted me. Shoot the your fucking mouth. Don't fucking talk to me this way, laddie. I'll bounce your head off the fucking cut. You fucking see this guy right here? This guy. Three rounds. This guy, he's fucking drink. fuck? What? <laughs> you wanna fucking film? I'll show you. Oh shit, he's pulling out their fucking weapons. What are you pulling out, bro? Because <laughs> the cops are right there. So. All the cavalry. The fuck is that? Oh. Oh, okay, whatever. You're trying to make my fucking little tripod seem like shit. I'm out of here. Fuck that. Okay. <laughs> fuck this. Tomorrow, we go find the card game table. We both learn how to play Dragon Ball card game. The Super one? We both go buy a star deck and fight each other. Deal? Oh, uh, 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 uh. Loser has to fight the winner in a boxing match. What the hell? Can we just do that without that? You can box without without the, the card game. Why is everybody so scared to box me? I'm ready to fucking go! Are you gonna be drunk or sober? It's a deal. It's a deal. It's a deal, laddies. He's gonna forget. <laughs> Jake, remember you have that fight coming up? What fight? The boxing fight because you lost the Dragon Ball Super Card game. Oh, <laughs> Emish. No! Okay, so we just got back to the room. I think it's about 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock? Look at this guy. Look at this dude. He's tired. He's tired. 
and there's one problem. There's one bed. There's well, there's one bed, right? And there are two. He planned this shit. <laughs> there there, there are two out. little sofas. Listen, listen. But the biggest problem is we don't have any body wash or any soap. I mean, if you guys come with me, they have like these little rinky dink kind of things in the shower I that I, I don't that personally thing. like in terms of preference because you can't really wash your nutsack with. But what is, what is this? To accommodate two grown men, I don't know. Yeah, my dick is way too big for this thing. But all, all with a magnifying glass, it is. And we can't both fit in there. This is amazing. What the hell you mean both? <laughs> you mean both? No, but Twenty-four hours later. Looks like shit outside. All that? Oh, what does it look like outside? It's fucking ugly, and it's raining. Shoot your fucking moat. Oh, no, no. It, it does look like we're outside today. I mean, if anything, the mud that we stepped in yesterday is gonna be more muddy. Oh, you mean the fucking mud that you wiped on the side of the fucking floor over there? You made me carry all that fucking water here? I didn't make you carry shit. You fucking made me carry- <laughs> look at this. This guy wiped mud on the side of the freaking carpet there. When the people come in here to clean up, they're gonna be like, Who the fuck took a shit on the side of the fucking rug? Man. All right, so it's the first day of the con. It's Friday. We just woke up getting ourselves together uh, We're gonna go meet out with Halusa twin first actually because he's not that far away He's in the Holiday Inn, I believe hotel which is right by the 7-eleven that myself and Daquan and Amish and everyone went to yesterday to get like Resources and supplies and shampoo and stuff So uh, we're gonna go meet up with Halusa twin before we head out to the con which I'm so excited for because Not only do we get to meet Ryu Horikawa and Damian Clark and Sean Schimmel and Christopher Sabbath, but it's the grand opening ceremony. It's the red carpet event for all the VIPs and whatnot. So I have my pass. Well, actually, I have to get my pass. This guy is in the bathroom somewhere. I have no idea what he's doing. So I'm about to just bust in there. Let me see what he's doing. Let me see. Hey! Yeah. You taking the dump? Slap it. You taking the dump? Yeah, hold on. You taking the dump in the sink? Nah, nah. I'm not oh. taking the dump, though. <laughs> in, in the sink? Are you? He's taking a dump in the sink. Give me a minute, give me a minute. Oh man! Ah. Many hours later. just got into the VIP section right now. It's actually looking pretty good, as you guys can see. And uh, this is where all of the guests are gonna be. Everything looks empty right now, so. As you can see behind me, this place is pretty big. Pretty large. Okay, so we lost my mans yesterday. He's back, what happened? What happened? He see, got I can't, I, I yeah, can't really nah. put that all that on, information. On, 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 you know, that's a little uh, personal. Yeah. Private. He just disappeared. He disappeared. We, were, we were knocking on his door. He did not want to open. Hey, actually, you know what? Nothing happened. So, yeah. Beanish, actually, I can tell you what happened. Beanish, me, no. Nah. <laughs> I wanted to pass out, but I was throwing up a shit this morning. You were? Yeah. I was throwing up like water. There was nothing. Oh, so you remember, I didn't eat yesterday. All the, all the shots, yeah. I didn't eat yesterday. And then I woke up drinking a lot of water and shit kept throwing up. It's crazy. Oh, my God. All right, so this thing's about to start. Everyone's in here right now. And I don't know, like, this place looks pretty big, though. One debt to society later. If things were different, and Yamcha... Yamcha's <laughs> <laughs> father, are we screaming? How are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's screwed. Yeah. Wait, who? If <laughs> you... That kid would be wearing like yellow pants all the time. <laughs> because you know it's my theory that like the, the Batman outfit actually wasn't Vegeta's, it was actually Yamcha's and he left it at Bulma's house. <laughs> I mean, you know, you do what you gotta do. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you guys came in to do Super Episode 47, the first three arcs of Super, the first two were movie retellings, the third one was the Universe 6 arc, which introduced us to Hit. How many of y'all love Hit? Yeah! 
and Kamba. Right of applause. Yeah. Yeah. But the Trump's art, episode 47, was the series got so dark. Yeah. That first episode, yeah. we're in the future. Future Bulma dies. Whoa, spoiler. <laughs> when y'all came in the studio to record that episode, could you sense the, sh the tone shifting? Because when that thing was airing, people were losing. I was getting text messages like, "Great, that was a crazy episode." I think I think we were all excited because you know you go through the, the first few episodes and it's filler and it's a retelling, and then all of a sudden we're like, "We get to act, we can act, <laughs> like really act." And so yeah, we got a, we got really excited about that part. I was I was, I was ready for the dark. Yeah, I felt like it was taking like every, it was taking way too long to get to where Trunks arrives again because Trunks is pretty much my favorite character in yeah. the show. Yeah. Like, so and I was so happy for people to actually hear Colleen do some actual acting work. Um, so I was really excited for those two to be paired up in those scenes because they're, it's kind of the darkest, most real stuff in the series. And uh, I'm really proud of the work that we did on that. I love it. I've been waiting. Like you got you guys tell us about what, what what's gonna happen and I try to stay with what we're actually dubbing. So I, I have been waiting for future Mai to show up and when she finally did, Raleigh, uh, the director, uh, called called me and was like, Okay, she's here, you can come in now. And I was just I, I was super stoked and it's one of the only times that I've gone in where I've actually wanted to stay past my session time to be like, Okay, show me what happens. Um, I, genuinely wanted to know and I think that all of this time travel stuff like it's just in it, it's my favorite storyline of the Dragon Ball universe. All of it? Every, every arc? Of every, it really is. I, all, I love the time travel stuff and I think they did such an amazing job of actually making it unique um, and I love all of it and plus I love yours. So. Thank you Bulma for the cure! <laughs> 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 I want to ask you, Monica, how do you feel about Trunks possibly being involved with a woman who tried to murder her when she was 16? <laughs> I think whatever makes him happy, his mom is going to stand behind him. <laughs> I mean, really, who in this room hasn't been in that relationship? Yeah! I don't think Trunks would date anyone unless that were the case. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not a lot of options left in the future. Yeah. The worst punishment Mike could have would be to have Vegeta as a father-in-law. So, Eric, when the Trunks, so you started voicing Trunks in 2000, and the Trunks arc takes place 17 years in the future, and ironically and coincidentally enough, you started dubbing it 17 years after you started doing Trump. It's kind of weird how the timing worked out. Did your did you purposely kind of come into the role and kind of change your voice a little tiny bit to match up with the fact that Trump is now older? No, not the voice, the intent. Just where he was coming from. Because he'd gone from being, you know, really young to being just a slightly bit older. And <laughs> as we all know, when you're a kid, that means a lot. So I tried to just look at my son and think about how he would go about it. He's 25 now, but I watched him through those years, you know? Just tried to do what he did. And uh, so I guess I can thank him. He's very violent. <laughs> Eric, I know, Eric. Yeah, he is. My son is very violent. <laughs> He's not <laughs> The other day, he actually escorted a mayfly out the door. <laughs> out of no joke. I know Eric came up with a lot of suggestions um, when he was going to do that role. He's like, I was thinking since he's, he's sort of like in puberty, he was he was coming up with these ideas like, I'm from the future. Uh, I know he was trying a lot of these things out, but I think we just kind of ended up sticking with what we thought was best, you know? Because I had nothing to do with that. Uh, it didn't hurt that I was going through puberty at the time six months ago. <laughs> Isn't it unusual that you went through puberty 17 years later than you were supposed to? <laughs> For my wife, yeah, that was unusual. <laughs> I was okay with it. <laughs> so, let's talk about Vegeta. Okay. Yeah! 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 Tomorrow, yeah! Night, tomorrow night, we got history being made right here in this building, in this room. 
for the first time ever, as far as I know. Brian Drummond. Yeah. Chris Woo. Abbott. Yeah. Rio Horikawa. No, this, I know that that has never happened because this weekend is the first time I've ever met Brian Drummond face to face. We're friends on the internet, uh, but we, we've never, we've actually never met until like yesterday when we had dinner and it was awesome. He's super cool. I have, and in the small amount of talking with him, and we'll discuss this tomorrow, his experience working on the show is very similar to mine. And what's even crazier is that Rio Horikawa's experience working on the show was similar to ours too. Like it, we were all, we all went into it not knowing a whole lot of what was going on, and uh, we just kind of had to grow into the part as it happened. Poor Rio didn't even know if he was going to last, you know, twenty episodes because he saw people die immediately. He said, like, <laughs> he thought, I'm never going to survive this show. So, uh, and so, and all of us had to work really hard. I, I assumed that. Rio Horikawa got to sit in this golden room where, uh, where where all of the directors and everyone who's ever drawn or worked on Dragon Ball just sat in the same room and gave him tons of direction, but it's not the case. Like he just he was in there with a director and an engineer, and there was no Toriyama to tell him every single moment of every single uh, like feeling that the character should have. And that's kind of how we worked too. We were just sort of guessing as we went along. We didn't. Uh, I mean, a bit of trivia, we, the first time we dubbed Dragon Ball Z, we didn't even have the Japanese version to listen to. We were listening to Silence, and it was, well, if, and if we did listen to it, he just reminded me, if we actually played what was on the tape, it was the Spanish version of Dragon Ball Z. Which was a really weird reference, because they had to change Chi Chi's name for some reason. <laughs> Because the word Chi Chi in Latin American Spanish means. Yeah. <laughs> We're all in Texas, so the majority of us know that. <laughs> this is, this is going to be released to like. Oh, you're right. Hello, world. <laughs> so, how much satisfaction do you think Vegeta got from beating up an enemy who he could out and out kill with no remorse who looks just like Kakarot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a good question. Uh, Vegeta has this weird thing about Kakarot. I don't know if you've ever noticed this. <laughs> I think Vegeta really likes Kakarot. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> A whole lot. So, it, my, one of my favorite moments is when uh, Vegeta is fighting uh, Copy Vegeta, and then Vegeta, Copy Vegeta starts fighting Goku, and he's really confused as to who he wants to win. Like he's, he's, like he's, voted, he's rooting for himself because he really wants to see himself beat up Kakarot, but he, does, he wants to be the one that kills Kakarot. There's a very confusing time for him. Uh, so yeah, he's, I don't know, but Vegeta will always surprise me. That guy is amazing. Yes. I just, you know, these guys, I mean, these guys I've seen, I've seen. Just go ahead and tell them, just go ahead and tell them. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, it would be young Gohan. Actually, is hardest is hardest for me. That's the the roughest on my voice um, for sure. And uh, I mean, I'm sorry, young Ma is what I meant to say. Is the roughest on my voice because it's hard to pinch my throat that much and, and get up there. And that is not. I don't. I'm not Monica Real. I don't live there naturally. <laughs> so future Ma was pretty easy to get into, and that's actually kind of my natural acting zone, like I prefer that sort of naturalistic acting. Uh, so Gohan was fun to get out of it uh, and, and like try something new and be more comedic. I had already done that with Luffy in One Piece. Yeah! Yeah! Shout out to Old Age, like 10 years. But, uh, no, but I, I love each of them in their own individual way, but my, as a, as a young girl, is the hardest to get into, both mindset and voice. Well, the good thing about voicing in one piece is that you have a job for life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dear Oda, I love you. I love you So the entire cast will be doing signings pretty much all weekend long, and we'll be back on Sunday and we have a panel scheduled, which is the Heroes of the Trump Art. What? How would you have done in the tournament of power? How would I have done? Yeah. One. Yeah. <laughs> I got a sword, man. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> well, at least I'm not Yamcha. <laughs> put together an impressive body of work throughout their careers. Sunny, of course, tremendous resume. They all have tremendous resumes. How many of y'all here are fans of Full Metal Alchemist? Yeah. This man directed it. So if you want that Thank you. Thank you. How many of y'all are fans of this? Obscure little show that actually competed with Dragon Ball Z in ratings called Yu Yu Hakusho. And did you know that there's a Yu Yu Hakusho special coming later this year? Cynthia is Botan. So, first question is for Mike and John, actually. So, this has been debated of the for years. For okay. years and years and years. In the 20 seconds in Kaichi Budokai, second round, it was Tien and Roshi. They had this epic battle, and Roshi, during the fight, decides, hey, the next generation has to step up. It's time for Goku and Tenshin Han, that was his choice, um. to be the next generation. Knowing what we know now, had the fight continued, who do you think would have actually won? Poir. <laughs> I, I can't disagree with that. Poir. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> so, Dragon Ball, I want to talk a little bit about classic Dragon Ball. Okay. Everything started there. What were some of y'all's favorite moments? We'll start for with Mike and then move back. What were some of y'all's favorite moments recording that classic Dragon Ball, I think the older episodes? Like, you know, you had the character arc of Goku, you had Chi-Chi eventually marrying him in the tournament, you had Ten Shin Han going from being the rival student to being a member of the of the Roshi school. What were some of y'all's favorite moments recording that? I know it was a long time ago, but what do you remember of that? Back in the old days. <laughs> um, I don't know, there's a lot of fun stuff on there. I like uh, the little Jackie Chun segments. Yeah. It's totally not Roshi, I have a wig on. <laughs> and uh, let's see, there was uh, additionally a fight or two where, I don't think it was the same Jackie Chun time period, but put that anywhere. Uh, there was uh, uh, an, an invisible fighter that kind of uh, nose bleed yeah. all over. Yeah. 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 Classic. I don't know how he got that nose bleed. Bacterium. But I didn't do curling back then. That was Lori Steele, who's still at, who's at the convention. She's here. Yeah. 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 Give it up for Lori. I did play a lot. Of, I played General Blue in the original Dragon Ball. Yes, you did. Yes. And I was, uh, I was the voice director for about half of that series. So yeah, I was the other kind of thing. So maybe about a quarter. I think you were filming the last arc. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I directed the one. There was some good stuff there, though. Yeah. I actually wanted to ask you, because you were, you were in Funimation, uh, Sonny, at the time. You were, um, you've been there for a while, but when you guys did Dragon Ball compared to Z and GT, uh -huh. Z and GT were very westernized. You had your rap music, Step Into the Grand Tour. Yeah, yeah. Grand Tour, Grand Tour. Yeah. Yeah. Step Into the Grand Tour. Pearl Jam for Broly or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but when y'all did Dragon Ball, though, it seems like it was much more of like an organic dub. You kept the original music, yeah. other than the censorship. What was like the reasons behind that? Why was Dragon Ball different? The, uh, those are all reasons that were uh, a higher payroll of people above me. Uh, so I don't know all the reasoning behind that, but they're like, hey, we're gonna do, do it this way. And you know, that's the way I like to do it. So I'm like, yeah. so. I think that though, when we first started, you know, we were still in the mindset of let's Americanize everything. And yeah. then we realized, no, people really like the original intent of the Japanese. So when we got to Dragon Ball, because we did Dragon Ball after Dragon Ball Z, right? Uh, We'd already done like two seasons of, yeah. They were, yeah. they were yeah. simultaneously recording, but Z was recorded first. Yeah. Uh, at least part of Z. Right. Yeah. Yes. I never knew what the hell was going on. <laughs> just up. I just showed up every couple of months and yelled. 
<laughs> what were some of your favorite moments? Strong arming uh, Goku in the very was so romantic and fun. <laughs> he punched you, yeah. and the wind will knock you out of the tournament. Yeah. Which is something that Hit did, but not quite the same thing. So, how many of y'all in here are, how can I put this, aficionados of power scaling? <laughs> And I'll tell you, Curling can kill every Avenger. Without question. He's a Planet Buster level. He's, a, he's actually beyond Planet Buster because when you look back at Dragon Ball, in the first tournament, 21st tournament, Master Roshi blew up the moon. Right. If Roshi can blow up, can blow up, excuse me, the first mistake of the night, the moon. Damn. Then Krillin could definitely take Jupiter out. Yonja <laughs> could take out Jupiter, Saturn, and your... Yeah, your ass. <laughs> the problem with power scaling against Dragon Ball Z is that their power levels are way too high to begin with. Yeah, you know, it's just ridiculously high. They're all over a certain number. Yeah. Over a million. Over 9,000! What? It's over 9,000! Don't worry, that's coming up soon. <laughs> over over 5,000. That's what they said. Bit by bit by bit by five five thousand. Bit by bit by six. I heard six. So. Cynthia, tell us. Nine thousand. Tell us about transitioning from a fighter to a mother. What? 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 I, you know, I didn't do a ton of episodes where she was doing the fighting, so those were really, really fun. Mostly, you know, just being a nag. <laughs> just going from doing fight yells to just mom yells. And... Well, Botan was more fun? Botan was more fun? Uh, I don't know. There's so it was fun playing a hot character. <laughs> And my mouth starts watering. Like, like, only in real life I can do that. John, favorite TN fight. He's got a few good ones. Let's give him a break. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 The only one, I mean, as far as I recall, who actually has, like, maybe not beat Goku in a fight, but you know, they, they fought to a draw there. You know what I mean? Was there ever one, like, Tien versus Sunglasses Hut? Like, you don't make anything for me! <laughs> well, it's funny because Goku went to the finals of the first tournament, lost to Roshi, Jackie Chun, then he lost to Tien, and then finally he got a win in the last one. So that was Toriyama's great development. Oh. oh my god. Hey, can, we, can we give you guys a round of applause? I mean, Coming yeah. out, so many guys came out. This is amazing. This is an insane How else would you like to win? Oh! Yeah. <laughs> so excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First yeah. Technically, aren't you supposed to be Android 21? No. Like, oh, is that a reference to the show? Yeah, like, <laughs> numerically, <laughs> numerically, like, they have 20 and 16, 15, 13. You should be 21, right? He's the newest one, right? Seven. Yeah, but Cell sounds better. Cell sounds perfect. Thank you. I've seen pieces sit in the corner over there. Thank you very much. <laughs> you and I will get along just fine. <laughs> <laughs> you guys primarily play villains. Where do you pull like that narcissism? Like, 
you know, that, that evil intent. Because I don't think you guys are bad people, right? Where do you get that, that from? Where you That's a lady young question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you don't really know me. <laughs> That doesn't, that shouldn't come out of your face. Sorry. <laughs> You're too beautiful and lovely for that sound to come out of your mouth. The sound comes out natural. For me, it wasn't that hard. Just not let me have all the food that I want. And I will just turn it into Android 21. That sounds like you're right. That's like you have chocolate. <laughs> so you're new to the franchise. I wanted to ask you if you did Fighter's major role. Well, you dealt with a fan. Yeah, a little baby fan. Baby fan. But, but with 21, it's like the main villain of a, of a whole video game. How did you end up getting the gig? Did you get called? Did you audition? How did that come about when you joined the family? Uh, I had auditioned um, and didn't hear anything for like months. So I was like, eh, throughout the audition and uh, you know, these things, you either get it or you don't. Months passed by, literally, and then Sabbath texts me out of the blue. He's like, hey, I have an idea, but let me know if you have some free time. <laughs> and then he tells me, I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah I, I think I can find some free time to voice that, for sure. Um, but yeah, it was just auditioning. I had already uh, voiced Baby Pan at that point, but I was so, I was just happy just to be in the Dragon Ball universe. Didn't think it would be able to happen, and yeah, and then I got to play. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the differences between voicing for a video game and an anime? Uh, so for most video games, you don't have to worry about class like you would with anime, um, but for this, you did have to match the length that they gave you in the in the Japanese sound file. So, for example, it would it would take her, you know, this long. You could see the little sound file of her saying, "More, more, I want more candy." Yeah. <laughs> and so you would either and you would have this many words. You either had to say it really slowly and add a lot of that hunger to it. Or you had to say really, really quickly and get it out as fast as you can, so it would fit. Um, so yeah, some more freedom in some ways, and then also some limitations. Does everyone know what the flaps are? No. No. You just assume everybody knows. Yeah. Uh, and we have to match that, and, yeah. and it's very technical. Damien, when you came back to do stuff for Kai, did you do the voice? That, when you guys came back, you got a different script. I would say a better script uh, for the dub. So, what were the changes when you did the original Z and Kai? Like, how was the process different? Some good back. question. Oh. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> for a lot of, I think I speak for a lot of us when I say that we can fix all the stupid stuff we've been before. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can't be like, yeah, the before version, that sucked. <laughs> we were able to look, because I don't know how many years went by, my like, god, eight, nine, ten years went by. Ten, ten years. Ten years. So you get to, you know, you watch it, you get to look back and go, oh no, I, just, like, I, I, don't, I, I would change that or I would do that, that differently. I mean, for Cell, I think I, I tried to make him a little more sinister and intimidating rather than sort of <laughs> There was a lot of jokiness happening, I felt anyway, in Dragon Ball Z that I wanted to kind of correct and not always happen to me. Such a clown. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing too, like with, with Kai, and this has been discussed by Chris and Sean, the script was a lot more accurate to the Japanese. That was the whole thing. Yeah, then was that too, yeah. Yeah, like Z was... You know, they took more liberties. Kai was more accurate. I love the Kai dub. Y'all love the Kai dub? Yeah. Linda, yes. let's go back. Yes. So you played Frieza, but also you played Fortune Teller Baba. Yes. Yeah. But my personal favorite role of yours, can y'all guess what it is? Genkai! Genkai! 
Genkai. Oh yes, I love playing Genkai too. There's talk of you you like show coming back. Will we hear you again? I haven't heard. I hope so. <laughs> if, I mean, they get the license. Yes. They have a special coming out. I know. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. Yes. The Japanese version. Yes. I hope. I hope I do that. They get it first. Not yet, Justin. He'll be here tomorrow. So. Do it. So, <laughs> so they will be signing all weekend, uh, along with Chuck Huber, Android 17, who will be here tomorrow. Woo! And hey, he gets released tomorrow, doesn't he? <laughs> doesn't he? I don't know if he's going to sign it. He's on that island with the Minotaur. Yeah. There's always something going on with that guy. <laughs> so, and also we're going to have a villains panel coming up on Sunday oh, yeah. featuring Linda, Damien, and Josh Martin as well. Frieza, Cell, and Boo. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I'm so sorry, that was like the whitest, like, villain ever. <laughs> <laughs> How are y'all doing? Yeah! Yeah! Blue Delicious! How are you guys doing? Yeah! You don't have to yell. Chris, that red carpet kind of thought the Von Erics were over there, right? Say so what now? The red carpet felt like the Von Erics. Say that! Say that! Say that! Say that! Uniquely and oddly satisfying. <laughs> 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 so that actually makes me the spawn of Satan. <laughs> you are the devil. <laughs> or Bedell. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome. <laughs> it's okay, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you stay away from those sins of beach. <laughs> How many of y'all think Videl is like the best chick? She actually was one of the first like female serious like superhero. I can overcome. Like the more like I am so in love with this character that like she's a. I, I almost I was gonna say bad A, but I'm not gonna say it. I love the dog. Yeah. Go on's got good taste in chips. Yeah. <laughs> and Angela did didn't work out though. Oh. The dog on the So Kara, you voiced both the Devil and Go Go Ten. Yes. Um first of all, first question about that. Do you think that Go Ten's kind of gotten for lack of a better term, kind of the shaft? I mean, I feel like after the bull arc, we didn't really do much. Like it, do you think Go Ten deserves more of a spot? <laughs> Yeah. 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 So this really weird thing has happened in Super where where Goten has just become kind of like <laughs> I just you know he's a cute you know I'm cute I don't do very much <laughs> and the same thing with Videl like she's become this like eternal housewife that's like oh can I serve you <laughs> I had a child I no longer fight. <laughs> together on the air on Radio Disney. Radio Disney? Yeah, it's me and Kara. 
sound is sweet. I'm Sarah. In case there's any confusion. But yeah, you know, we, we heard about audition opportunities. We went in and uh, yeah, I got to this like, pick from this little binder here who you want to read for. Pick who, you know, maybe five or six characters. And the first page was Gohan. I was like, definitely Gohan. I've been watching DBZ ever since it first started airing in the States in 95. So before Toonami's first incarnation, back, you guys remember, right? Yep. Some of you yeah. people. Back, yeah. back, yeah. back when you set your VCR for Saturday morning at like 4 or 5 a.m. Yeah. And one episode would come on and you just have to wait each week. And then, then you saw, oh, the Saiyan saga that keeps repeating. <laughs> so years. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I got to, get to, you know, let's push us forward, you know, all that. So yeah, Gohan was the first uh, major role I had in voiceover, and then slowly after that I got the narrator next time on Dragon Ball Z. Yeah! It was great, you know, getting to, getting to uh, start uh, something I've wanted to do since I was a kid, and being a fan of something that I recently you know, got to, to be a part of as well. So, it's like, killer! Yeah. Hama! <laughs> <Holla. laughs> you know, it's funny because, here's a trivia, a little bit of trivia here. In both Japan and in the United States, and a lot of people, I think, underestimate this part of the series, but the Great Saiyan Man arc is the highest rated peak of Dragon Ball Z, both Japan and here. And it's, yeah. most of it's filler, but, Highest rated. How many of y'all are fans of Ray Sandman? Yeah. Awesome. So I mean, I'm so used to hearing people say that he's the Jar Jar Binks of Dragon Ball. Oh, my. So yeah, well, that made me feel a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> Josh, I've been wanting to ask you this for 17 years. Uh oh. Oh God, yes. There you go. How did you do that voice? for so long without blowing out your vocal cords. Ooh. Yeah. Um, well, I don't, I, honestly, I can't explain it. It just works. You know, I, I was lucky to uh, yeah, have a little vocal training growing up, choir and things like that, but I think I was, I was blessed with some natural talent and it just works out and I appreciate y'all watching it. <laughs> favorite scenes as a character that's not Gohan. It's, it's, I was cast as the ice cream parlor guy. <laughs> and, I, and I just made it Forrest Gump. It's like, hey, you gotta pay for that. <laughs> 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 And then he just goes nuts in the ice cream shop. Oh, great. <laughs> so, since we're in the blue saga, I'm going to ask all you guys, starting with Josh and work our way down, what's your favorite candy? Yeah. <laughs> Starburst. Give it up for Starburst! Lisa <laughs> Spina Tastes slightly different, but yes, Reese's peanut butter. Anything. I, uh, as a child, my favorite thing was the, the three pack fun dip with the stick. Yeah, yeah but they, they do them like one packs now, yeah. which is bullshit. Stick. I had an extra stick. You, can't, you don't get an extra stick in the one pack. I have a 
a really long history of going to panels and someone asks a question and I answer really like, I, it turns out I answer like, hey, dumb girl. Um, <laughs> it, yeah, it was a real question and I was happy with that. So, my signature is Teresa's Peanut Butter Cups. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How do you eat your Reese's peanut butter cups? Good question. Like, do you like take the wrapper off, or do you like leave it in the wrapper? Good you take the wrapper off. That's stupid. Because <laughs> then you have to touch it. You get chocolate all over your hands. Did you get to lick? This is getting so Oh, so you're just going around licking your fingers. <laughs> Take a Hershey's chocolate bar and dip it in a can of peanut butter. Yeah. And then you know it doesn't taste as good. No, they're not. <laughs> Unless it's Reese's peanut butter. Yeah. Which they do that. They do that. Oh! oh. Anyone got a dog leash in your wallet? Or something? Savignon Blanc. Savignon Blanc. We got a fork in We got a fork I'm going to take one of Starburst, though. I like Starburst, too. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
actually ate some pudding. I really did. Really? Yeah, that's the preparation I wanted to get, get into character. Yes. What type of pudding was it? Right, it was chocolate. Oh, I love chocolate. It's a Gerard. It's special formulation. And we'll prepare some for. No, like legit, let's do that. Tomorrow, we'll talk about We have a food panel that we're going to talk about, but we're probably going to eat in front of you. Sandwiches and stuff from my favorite places and stuff, and then bring it eat in front of all y'all. We just can't, we can't eat in front of people, right? Because it's a thing. The yeah. thing that you. It, it is special. It is special. <laughs> and I, I'm glad that it's with you, Ian. It's so glad it's with you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 This is legitimately like we were talking about bathing for the last 10 minutes in the back here. This is kind of how we are. But anyway, <laughs> I was going to say, uh, We've been discussing Kamehameha 2 next year already. Alright. Yeah. Right. Now, I've not received my invitation yet. <laughs> well, one of the ideas pitched was what if we do Beers and Weeses tasting contest where yes! the people can cook for you guys. <laughs> best whatever. Apple crisp. That could go really, really wrong. <laughs> Provide the taster first. <laughs> no poison. I'm kidding. <laughs> so that was great. Yeah. Two hours later. All right, so I want you guys to check this out, right? The Omni Sensation Bar. I'm going to read this out to Emish. Okay, so we have a Red Bull energy drink for $5.25. Are you going to eat ass, bro? <laughs> we have. <t> <laughs> A uh, tonic water and a ginger ale for five, uh, four dollars and twenty-five cents. If you want to fucking eat something, right? God forbid you you know get hungry. A Kit Kat bar is three fifty. <laughs> One fucking Kit Kat bar. Snickers. How much is Snickers? Three dollars and fifty cents, bro. What else we have here? We have a uh, yo power bars. How much are power bars? Four dollars and seventy-five cents. Forget like having to drink beer, wine, or sprites, bro. So we have gin, rum, whiskey. All is eight twenty-five. If you want some beer, six dollars and twenty-five cents. Wow, yo, you might as well just charge an arm and a leg for this because I wouldn't see anybody paying like five dollars and twenty-five cents for a freaking Red Bull energy drink, bro. Ah, my face. The following day. So, day two. Emish looks tired as a raccoon, bro. And it's because of Emish that we're late, right? What? Right? Yeah, you overslept. No, That's you, why. You woke me up after you were ready. I, no, I, I already woke. I already woke up midway putting on my pants. You're just like I'm like Emma. Halfway after yeah. you were ready. Yeah, no, I'm. Exactly. I was already. I was halfway up, and I said, I kept throwing pillows at you, and you didn't want to wake up. So thanks to you, uh -huh. we're late. We're late. You had one job, Snaggletooth. Okay. And you messed it all up. Aren't you supposed to be dead, bro? You're alive. He's alive. Aren't you guys supposed to be dead? How'd you come back? No, I'm uh, Oh, you hear the background of it. Dragon Ball Fighters right now.
bomb the bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. So this place is absolutely packed, man, from like top to bottom. It's fucking insane. It's insane. And it's not it's not as big as I thought it would be, but it's pretty big. And no, they have a lot of quality stuff. We just got some quality stuff. We'll show you guys in the room. <laughs> There's two of them. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that master. Can I take a picture, please? No. Master. I don't like people. It's master. When's anime war episode eight coming out, master? Stop. Let's. I want my life back. When is? When is anime war episode eight coming out? Never. Can I come to your hotel, please, to watch it? No. Can I take a picture? Oh my god, it's a big fan. Big fucking fan. Master Media. <laughs> I would buy a list of that one. While he has Master Ultra in space. <laughs> Come on. Hmm. I would like to tell you that he's very, very close to being potentially, possibly not being able to beat me. Are you insane, man? Don't destroy me. I'm, I'm just, I'm just relaying a message here. I'm sorry, we. Where's Beerus? <laughs> no, 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 no. Can you beat Beerus in a fight? Yes. When you get to that point in your relationship with somebody who you loathe more than Nazis, uh, it, 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 it wears you down a little bit, and you start acting out, and that's what Chris does. He acts out uh, like a like a like a child, and uh, it's embarrassing to him. So I try to just let him do what he needs to do to feel good in his heart. And, and know that I'm clearly a better person. <laughs> That's why you're gross. That's the truth you're talking about. Thank you, I actually did realize I was just finishing. You're welcome, you just let him know that. <laughs> Thanks, Gigi. Nice. I've got a question for Mr. Grail. No. Oh, Christ. <laughs> I've got another question. It's okay, it's okay. I, 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 Okay. Um, I recently finished a rewatch of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and I, I found Kimberly one of your, your most standout roles in just about everything. I was wondering, like, it sounds very similar to Trunks, just in like the pure voice. Yes, it, they're both performed by me. <laughs> anyway, I was wondering, do you, do you prefer voicing villains or just? Just chaotic characters or heroes? Uh, I would, I prefer voicing the most interesting character. That's it. And oftentimes the most interesting character is, um, is the evil. They're naughty. They're naughty, yes. Yeah. So I like doing that, there's more for them to do. Ultimately they don't have as long to do things, like Shigaraki, my hero, right? He, he's, you know, he's the puppet master kind of, and I don't have a whole ton of screen time as him, but it's fun to play him. And um, I just like being evil, because in my day-to-day -day life, I'm the nicest person Damien's ever met. The nicest. You start with me, son. <laughs> yeah, so I like the evil guys, person. That's me. All right, thank you. Sure. This will be the last question. Thank you, good. Um, so, you look surprised. Shite! Be shocked. Make it great. Alright, I'll split you then. I have two for you and one for you. Oh, come on, bro. Alright, let's do it. Let's do it. Come on, bro. Alright, lay him down. Alright, lay him down. 
That's one of my catchphrases. It's the best! <laughs> What? Like, Baba Ba, Z, and Super, which one did you like prefer? Like, when he was there in Z or when he was in The second one. Oh, yeah, the second one. Z, not Super. Right now is what I prefer. I like being able to revisit a character later when they've done something different. And so, uh, you know, with the invention of Trunks at the beginning, I didn't really know what was going on. So I had a chance to revisit that with Kai, which was cool, but uh, not near as cool as coming in on Super and doing something different and taking that character to another level. That, according to that other guy earlier, was exactly the same. <laughs> I'm just kidding, where you You were never going to get over that. All right, what else? Um, and then in the, like, the future Trunks are, like, I'm not sure if you have Yeah, I do, actually, because it's not real. <laughs> that, that, like, it's a, yeah, it's a cartoon. And, uh, it's an anime, Eric. No, <laughs> dude, this is actually, actually, you know what the real answer is? It goes right back to the thing I was talking about earlier, where you've got a whole bunch of cooks in the kitchen, and periodically, not everything's going to connect up. So it's just kind of sort of the same thing that happens. You know, just lack of, like you said, right. Not right. everybody's on the same day. It's just like back to school with uh, with the buggy danger. I only have one question for you. In twenty-seven parts. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> you got one for Damien? Yeah. You got one for Uncle Damien? Going back to the fighters game, I know Cell is like one of the more characters kind of roast and all that. Do you have like a favorite you voice? Oh a favorite question? Like a favorite like or common, you did, you know, like a favorite you can write? That game? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Don't hold to you. I'm just thinking, I'm thinking you might. <laughs> no? Confident your speed! Does anybody have a favorite roast from that game? Huh? Oh, go on! Well, you're just calling out names, I'm calling out <laughs> The favorite roast, give me a line, a roast from the game. I'm quite confident in my speed, you know. What? Say that. What? I'm quite confident. I'm quite confident in my, in my speed. That's not. That's the worst roast I've ever heard. Who's <laughs> <laughs> a roast battle in that one? That one. That one. That one. That one. That one. I'm quite confident. That's again not a roast. Uh, like you're stupid, not smart. There you go. That's a. That's great. That's a great roast. Isn't it? You're an ugly and I'm pretty. I think that's I am rose rose. What? I am rubber, you are blue. Yeah, and that's that boo boo. <laughs> Go cool. What is this thing? What is it? Honey rocks. Oh. Here. I imagine that like, he's sitting as like, a, a row of cookbooks or something that he's experimenting out of. Yeah, it just looked like weird foreign alien text to him. And he's like, oh, okay. That's crazy. Can I have a fun? What can I substitute for this? From the pan, the mechie, the 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 Right? That has been me for 30 something years, and I was like, you know what? I don't buy a random bread book, and now I like to bake bread. It's what like makes me happy, and I run around and think about it. I almost. Monica Rial's fiance is in the room, and I almost brought him up and to back me up on some of the weird stuff that I cook. Ron, uh. Ron, you here? Anyway, so my girlfriend's a vegetarian, so I bring Balma and her fiance over all the time to feed them meat because I need someone to eat the barbecue I make. <laughs> it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's, it's a little weird how, how life has that little overlap of like to go out and get wrong with lunch. Well, I'm gonna look how far the next year. Okay. I'll tell you. I'll tell you.
I'll let you. I'll let you know. I'll keep it a secret from the Sabbath machine. I don't want those guys coming over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then Wells. What was what mode did you talk about? What do you call it? Start with the brisket, for sure. Yeah. 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 A little bit of burn in afterwards. I love the burn in But it's weird. I like I like it to be nice and, and moist with a nice smoke rattling around the edge. Well, I'll separate. I do. I do. I cut off the, uh, the, 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 the paint over there so it goes brisket. Right. And there's like fat, and then there's that other little bit of paint. Of course. Mm -hmm. right. So you cook it to about 200, maybe 190 something. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe 225. And then you barbecue it. Take it. Dude, if I've been barbecuing, my beard stinks like, uh, well, right now, Jack Daniels whiskey barrel trucks because they're delicious. <laughs> they such good smoke off that. You run your knife along that fat cap, comes off, put that fat thing, the thing back in there until it's about 225, you bite into it, it goes, nice. Mm -hmm. Do we get to see each other at overtime occasionally? It's always, I like it when Ian goes first because, like, he, he, he helps to sharpen the corners of, of Beerus's, you know what I mean? There's, there's something about, Hearing Ian's performance as as Weiss, that definitely helps set the table for what what I do. And I don't know if there's a I don't know if there's like a weird effect if I go first. Oh no no no! Okay, so if you, you go first, I, I'm extra sassy because like I hear him be like Weiss and do this thing. I'm like no okay. <laughs> It's just one of those things that I get to just be a little bit more condescending and, and sassy because you're already there. And there's something about someone already being laid down that you can like mimic their little. The, 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 oh, there was one that you did where uh, we were um, like, did you eat this thing without me? And I'm like, what? <laughs> okay, just maybe go to like, well, I'm gonna do that. And I just threw it up. Mm -hmm. And the, <laughs> the director's like, that's going in there, bro. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so that's where that comes from. Just because I just react to you. Oh, and if he's not recorded yet, I do my impression of him to be like, we swear am I doing? Oh, my lord. So have they ever passed that on to you? Was that? They did, they, oh, thank you. No. Good, good. <laughs> so, if you ask Raleigh, he has a lot of you doing the uh, audio doing. Yeah, me doing wow. yours. Wow. Wow. That's fantastic. I think that's a B roll. On the B roll. Yes. Uh, you, you deserve a break today. There you go. Raisin and sand. Raisin that sounds sand. delicious. That's something I've wanted my whole life. That's what it wants in sand. I'm sitting there on the beach eating a raisin sand right now. He brings the race. Unfortunately. His daughter? Yeah, you know, my daughter made me a cake. She thought I should bring it up here and eat some. I don't know why. <laughs> you know what? Like, did you like um, Big Dude? Big Dude? It looks like it. Yeah. Big Dude. That's a good one. Yeah. Go watch one. You know what? Right? <laughs> oh, only a command guy can go to a panel and get food. Only here will we ask give you food. True. <laughs> Don't worry, it's warm. There's more going on. We're going to do our best to make sure that we're all well fed. I understand. 
understanding, he has a good understanding of what I do, so I'd love yeah. to see uh, y'all say, always floss after me, I'll be good to go great for my young babies. Yeah! Oh, okay, so this is like a PSA for you and the students at your, yes. uh, or the, uh, your patients. I think you're supposed to floss after. Oh, so before or after? It's important to do after. Okay, that's right. Brush your teeth with the meat. Brush your teeth with the meat. Always floss after. Right, floss after the meat. It's dependent on what you're eating. Okay. Hi. I'm Luis. And I'm Lyris. Always floss after the meat. Always. Because if you don't, the bacteria will cry your teeth.
my engineer and I were in the booth and um, we were just getting ready for a session. Chris came storming in the booth, storming in the door, got the booth, uh, he was exhausted, he was sweating, he was like, I'm so sorry, I'm late, I'm uh, so sorry about that. I and then he got the booth and he kept, got his headphones on, adjusted the mic, and he was just going through the whole, like, I, I don't even remember, it was something about your car, there was a whole explanation about that, and then complaining about like something with a contractor, like there was a big long story, it took a good four minutes to tell, and then at the end of it you're like, okay, okay, I'm sorry, let's do this, What? What? what's, what's first, what are we doing? And I was like, you're, you're not in this booth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Um, I know that the two of us, we worked on a show, and I'm not going to say anything because uh, it was difficult. We'll say that it was it was a we all three worked on the show that was difficult. Um, but what gave Chris and I peace was texting each other when the other was in the booth and just like <laughs> and sending like funny gifts and anything to like make each other laugh because it was like I'm going to die. <laughs> it's like here smile. So then there was a lot of giggling and that was not good. Yeah, there, was, there was one time I was directing a session with Sean and right afterwards was a session with. Um, with Laura, and Sean um, left Laura a bit of a presence in the booth unexpectedly. Whoa! And Laura got in and she's like, what died in this room? And then, and then Sean walks right back in the room, he's like, hey guys! Oh yeah, sorry about that. It's literally the worst, because you're all trapped in this little, you're trapped in that room with whatever it is you ate for lunch that day, and suddenly, so, like, it's the worst feeling if you just burp and then someone's like, hey, we gotta do a pickup line with somebody. And you're like, no, 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 you can get that pickup line later with that other person. I'll just stay in here with me and the, the smells. Are you kidding, man? When somebody they bring somebody into the booth that I'm in, they're like, Eric, this person needs to jump into the booth real fast for a pickup. I'm like, give me a minute. Wow. <laughs> that sounds like you. All right, we're ready. There's one time that Chris and I were working on Blue Gender and we were working into the night, and we had to go grab dinner. And I mean, this was you know, 20 years ago, and we were younger. So we could go out to dinner, and we went to the Olive Garden. <laughs> and we had some Italian margaritas with our dinner. And then we get back to the studio and are working on a show where my character has to pee himself. And if you've had two Italian margaritas, and you've got to pretend like you're peeing yourself, you you probably will really pee yourself. <laughs> no, I didn't do that. <laughs> there was, uh, I had the voice of an Android 18, um, not uh, Colleen's Android 18, but the very earliest Meredith, uh, convinced that I had remote control over the light that was in the booth because I had a little remote control under the booth, like in my hand. I go, light off, and then this is, you know, long before, you know, Philips Hue, uh, it was like, light off, what, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, light on. And I love to bring people into the booth and put a pitch shift on their voice. And then they'll come in and go, oh, 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 oh my microphone. And then I've instructed everyone else to go, no, you sound fine, all right, let's get started. <laughs> no, you're pitch shift on my voice. I'm like, no, sorry, I, it sounds good out here. Raleigh, are you hearing anything? No, no, <laughs> Let's get going, the no, seriously, no, Anyway. Take you to do your hair today, Faith? Um, maybe like eight, ten minutes. Gosh, you're so fast at that. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, yesterday, the oh, hey, Faith. It was really nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. We don't have that much more time. And then I mean, you, you are a question, right? <laughs> <laughs> if you just want to stand there, that's fine. Okay. Um, is this one for me or is it? Well, my question is for all of you, but I just wanted to say real quick at the Dynamite Girls thing yesterday, you mentioned you really love music, and I just want to say I really love music too, and I'm obsessed with musicals almost unhealthily. Uh, but my question was uh, if uh, Trunks, Vegeta, Bulma, and Mai were all joining the circus, what would their act be? <laughs> that was totally worth it. Um, Chunks and I have to perform together, right? Well, I would be a lion tamer. <laughs> well, I would turn my sword into a whip. A whip. A whip. A 
Yes. And, and then I would, I would turn Yamcha into the chair. Can, wait, wait, can, can, um, can it be the pilaf game? Can I, can I, yeah. in, in source with the, yeah, they're, they're included. You kind of are a circus, really. Yeah, <laughs> and we're just the jugglers for the classes. The jugglers who come out and they just drop the stuff all the time, especially pilaf, but we have to pretend that he's really good at it. So we pick them all up and juggle them for him. Vegeta's would be like, he, he'd be that, in that, the thing where you walk up onto the little stage and you look down in and it says like, World's Smallest Donkey! Because <laughs> he's, a, he's a jackass. <laughs> he would just stand there, kind of angry. Get out of here! I think that Bulma would be the ringmaster. I think she's the one, she's the only one that can get all of these jerks to do their thing. Especially Furious, she'd be like, get out of This is a great idea for art. It is. Somebody get on that. Yeah. Fan artist. Why hasn't Toye dubbed this yet? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Faith. Thanks, Faith. Faith, 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 Faith. All right, y'all. What is this weekend was cool, but what is your craziest fan story? Oh my God! It's a whole panel. Great. For a UK convention, nobody told me that um, the legal drinking age there is 18. So it's held at universities normally, and everybody's drunk the whole time. Because why not? Um, and a guy came up to me in the line, and he was like, I hate dogs, but I like you. And he was like drooling and spitting my face. And I was like, okay, that's great. Well, he got so drunk he passed out on the lawn. And his friends came in and they're like, we've got Sharpies. And I'm like, are you going to let me draw on your friend? And he was shirtless, splayed out in the grass, and I drew all over him. I drew a giant Hello Kitty on his belly that says Dubs Rule. Uh, there was this one time someone walked up to me and they were like, Hey, <laughs> uh, do you mind if I film this? I'm like, film what? They go, stay over 9,000. I went, what? <laughs> say, stay over 9,000. Like, and they're like, why would you want me to say that? Did you trust me? It's funny. I'm like, what is funny about that phrase? There's nothing even remotely funny. That was like literally the first time. Just, and then all of a sudden, the next time, four people would come and say, hey, can you say over 9,000? And then it like grew exponentially week over week until everyone finally, I'm like, I have to look up what the heck this means. I'm like, oh, cool, that wasn't me. And then I had to go, uh, I spent a, about a few months going every time they go say over 9,000. I'm like, oh, actually, that, that wasn't me. For them to just go, oh, well, just say it anyway, actually, because I just want to say it. So I just finally gave up. Like at that point, I just stopped arguing with them. It was faster for me to just yell over 9,000 than it was for Anyway. Dude, you why do you think you I convinced them to import the other Vegeta to this convention? He gets to say that crap now, so. Go downstairs and ask Mr. Brian Drummond if he'd like to say that phrase for you. It's over 8,000, I believe, right? Now. Yeah. There this is a question for you, Chris. Uh, can you do the Beagle song from Alvin Comics? Beagle. Wait, was that it? And this is another one. I'll see you, Eric. Thank you. Tasty to yum! Let's go play oh let's be friends! Fun time bingo! Ole! <laughs> Your beard tickles. <laughs> Actually, total side note, I realized that my three-year-old like has uncontrollable laughter until she farts if you do an AS, AMSR in her ear, if you just like whisper, I love you a lot. 
said, right into her ear, she laughs so hard that she farts every time. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not gonna do like damage to her <laughs> because it's the funnest thing to make someone fart and come in. So that's a total side note. Sorry. I'm glad. I hope this will go down in history as like that that panel from Kamehameha. I can't wait till so she's good. gonna see that. Yeah, I can't wait till she's 18 and somebody does it to her and is like, her dad said it was really funny. Yeah, some people just go up to her at conventions like. If she ever becomes a voice actress herself, people are like, is it true? Oh, it's very, very, very fun. On her, on her wedding day, she's gonna be in her dress. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I think they'd actually be pretty good friends. I think they both are, like, Vegeta's tempered quite a bit. Uh, I might, might have to give them some lessons on how to be a little bit more polite, but that'd be about it. Yeah, I think they get along pretty well. Thank you. Sure. For you, there's this topping on pizza, and like it starts with a C. Can you just it's tell me? It's cheese. <laughs> Thank you. You stole my question. <laughs> hey guys, uh, real quick, if any, uh, if all of you could choose one other voice to perform for a single episode, just to have fun with it, what would it be? Vegeta. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could do it. <laughs> Sold it. Probably sold it. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'd love to be Mr. Satan for one episode. <laughs> And, 
and be not like a solitary thing they thought of. Like this is a, it was a, it was a fetish, and it was disturbing. And I'm hoping that the avatar was incorrect <laughs> because I said yes. So I mean, you know. I'll be over later. <laughs> Maybe they just thought you were really dirty, that's it. <laughs> Maybe it was just like a broad hint. Yeah. Like, just like, I've seen you at a number of cons. Do you want a bath? Yeah. <laughs> I suggest people bathe all the time at conventions, and that doesn't offend them. Um, uh, let's see, or work, Eric said. Um, let's see, I have a situation where I, I got a call from an old friend from high school. Uh, it's like, hey, Chris, I'm gonna be in town and we should go grab a drink or something like that. I'm like, cool, cool, and I have the worst memory, like the worst memory for names especially. I was like, so yeah, that's odd, man, it's been so long. What, what was your name again, Jenny? I'm like, oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Jen, uh, yeah, yeah, totally, yeah, I remember you. Like, I guess, sure. So we met uh, to have a drink, and uh, where we were supposed to be to have a drink, and then my roommate's girlfriend at the time, who was a stylist at Nordstrom, said, are you going out on a date tonight? And I go, uh, uh, no, oh my god. So yeah, I'm going out to have a drink with a, a friend from high school named Jenny, I think. She goes, yeah, she's getting uh, sized for clothes right now, and she said she has a date with the DBZ voice actor tonight. <laughs> I was like, but then at this point, I'm like, well, I gotta see this through. Like, I don't want to see who's really brave enough to do this. So I show up, I'm waiting, and then she gets there, and I go, oh, Jenny, you're right. Oh my gosh. Uh, what were the classes we had together? I forgot. What was the name of our choir teacher? Oh, you don't remember that? It was Mr. Pullen. That's weird. Uh, like, was it, uh, who's our principal's name? Oh, oh Rob Parr. Oh, you didn't remember that either. That's because you don't know me. What is going on? She's like, I work at the DMV, and I got your information from the DMV. Did they make a Probably. It was Whoa. Stalker. Yeah. No, I've never heard that story Well, before. they should go against Jenny, who went to Clear Creek High School. I think it was her name. I don't know, but I, yeah. I did buy a drink, though. It was pretty cool. Jesus. You see, see Jenny at home, like, or at work, I guess, on her computer, like, all right, so no DVDs. Let's go over to Pokemon. Dude, it's funny. We were all freaked out by that. We realized that would totally happen in a movie. Like, that, they, movies have inspired us to go, like, the, the lonely girl is, like, at the DMV, and she gets together, and then at the end, she has to admit that she knows the DMV, but they're in love anyway. But yeah, they get together in that yeah, movie. Yeah, they would. He'd meet her at the airport. Um, or not, not if it was a single white female. She kills him. Yeah. She yeah. kills yeah. the other option. She, she could have other killed you, Chris. Yeah. I, as you know, Eric, I don't, I don't really fear for my life as much as you do. So. <laughs> about Vegeta's character from beginning to end that you have taken sort of and you're basically what is the thing you admire most about the character of Vegeta? Can I use my lifeline? constantly adapting and he's becoming such a better person that it's hard to believe that at the beginning of the series I have to remind myself and some people like wow you guys all you let your kids want like wear Vegeta shirts and stuff that dude killed people like he killed Nappa just for 
sucking or something. Like that. I think so. It's just his his ability to kind of adapt and change, just to become a better person, is what I love about him. As a performer, um, what we what and I don't know. I can speak for everybody. For my for myself, what I love is a character that has nuance. So a villain uh, or, or, or a hero, someone who's always the same, always just a badass, a bad guy, is not nearly as interesting as a performer as a character that has nuance, that has change. And that was the first word that came to me, and you basically uh, explained it, is there's change and a, and a journey. They go on to start somewhere and go somewhere. That's always so much more exciting to me. And then you get sucked in, drawn into what's happening to them when they're struggling, when they're in pain, when they're filled with anger, when they're filled with pride, when they want to uh, a, a, a fight, when they want to run. It's it, it's a, it's and and with Vegeta, it's all there. And that's what's so fun to play a character like that. あの、どうも。成長して I feel the same as uh, Ryan and Chris that uh, the growth that he had was wonderful. I guess the most wonderful thing about his character, and he grew as a person, and he also grew in his his strength as well. He started out as such an evil guy, and then he evolved into someone who wasn't just fighting for himself anymore, but fighting for others, fighting for his family, fighting to protect things. So that was a really wonderful thing to, to portray. We know that Mr. Stabbit watched Mr. Drummond. My question is, Mr. Drummond, did you ever get a chance to watch back then Mr. Savage's performance as Vegeta after you had done it first? And then my other question is, Mr. Horikawa, when did you first check out the any of the, any of the English dubs? Well, that's a, an excellent question. Um, you better answer this well. Though. Yeah. Well. Anytime uh, a role moves away from you to someone else, a performer is bound to be curious <laughs> as to uh, how it all comes together. And um, uh, knowing that Chris initially had to copy uh, it to his best ability what I was doing, um, I don't know if I thought he did a very good job. <laughs> when it's your own voice and you hear someone else doing it, I don't know if it sounds the same as what you're doing. I will say I love what Chris does right now with Vegeta. And had I thought of a voice anywhere near as with what you do, I would have done it in a heartbeat. But, but I can't do that voice. So I had to go with something far more princely, I would say. But I, I, I you know what? Everyone always wondered, what, what was it like? Was it was it was three ticked you off to no. I, I was a working guy, I was working on other shows, and I was, uh, I, I was just, after when I first heard some of the work, I was pumped uh, that, it was, that it was still good. I think I was more worried that it was going to be, the show was going to be bad and falter and not be any good, but everything I've seen of it, I love. The fan base for years I've loved, and um, it's just been a, a, a hoot to be a part of it, absolutely. Oh, sorry. Um, I, uh, I watched the Canadian version, obviously, uh, because I had to copy this guy. And for many years, I had two layers of, of trying to be humble 
about this role, because there was the Japanese layer of, well, I'm not the, Jap the original Japanese voice. And then there was this layer of, well, I'm not even the original English-speaking voice of the show. And I was terrified because when we took over uh, for the Canadian cast, we were just like, we were just this tiny little studio in North Texas, kind of trying to throw something together. And we had taken these roles from veterans in this industry. I mean, Vancouver is just known for its stellar voice work. And so I was terrified of, of even trying to keep up with the legacy that he had already created for the character, and also not to freak out all the six and seven year olds who were watching the show that suddenly had all their voices changed. And it, it meant a lot to me when Brian came up, like I met him as soon as we got here, so it was the first chance I've ever gotten to meet him in person. One of the things he said to me was like, man, you did a pretty good job copying me. How long did it take you before you decided you weren't gonna do that anymore? And was it like a conscious change or did you just change it because you, you, it just sort of fell down or something, it just sort of dropped and got close to your voice. And I told him that it was my conscious effort to kind of go from copying someone to actually playing a character, because it's way, I just didn't want to end up spending my entire life copying the same voice. I wanted it to be something that I could really work with. And if I had to, if I have to copy something and act on top of that, it's just an extra layer that you didn't need. So I did, and if you can compare Vegeta, a picture of him from the beginning of the series, to a picture at the end of the series, you can tell he goes through a powerful transformation. He grows like testicles between his eyes. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it was, it was huge, uh, huge shoes. And, I, and I, I started hearing his voice when we started working on the games, because originally we were recording in a vacuum. We never got to hear the original voices. But then I was like, oh, darn it, this guy's amazing too. And uh, yeah, I've always had such reverence for Ryo, and I've heard all of his performances on every game and every show since like, like 2002, and it's always an honor to be around him. I was just 
screaming my guts out for you guys heard some of the early stuff then that just the power stuff I would never do now because that was the one and only time I've lost my voice in voiceover was after an eight hour session and then they changed the rules we're only allowed to do four hour sessions now but back then we could do eight hour an eight hour session as Vegeta and had nothing left I went out to dinner that night with friends and it was there was nothing left. I don't. I, I just don't do that anymore. So the first thing I asked when I heard this dragon, this this DBC Kai was coming, was, I, I know the show. Uh, what, what's different about it? And they said um, uh, the fights are shorter. Yes. That was just that was all I cared about. The fights are shorter. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. The, the the greatest thing about working on Kai for us as a studio and, and for all the actors, I can speak, I think, on behalf of everyone who worked on that show. Uh, the best thing we got to do was really to go back and perfect some of the things that weren't right about the original. I, I, I tell everybody, like, go back and watch the orange boxes if you want nostalgia, if you want to remember your childhood. Like, if, if it's, if you want to hear cats love food, yeah, yeah, yeah. Walk, watch that and there's nothing wrong with it it's just its own thing but we finally got to go back and work on Thai where we really got to really dial in the, the correct translation and really accurate writing and got to tell the story for people who may have wanted to hear it more like the original and uh, we tried to keep the same flavor along the way but our main goal this time around was really to make it sound uh, as accurate as possible to the original Japanese while keeping kind of our English flavor to it. Also, when do you ever get a chance to go back and do something that you did 10 years ago again? Like, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing can be bad about that. That's the best, coolest thing, other than it being completely vocally stressful. And I think all of us were in a different place career-wise at that point. It was just, it's always nice to be able to go back and get a second chance to do something that you know is, is uh, beloved like that. <笑>そう、顔。僕の中では別に感じるつもりはないんですけど、僕はでも気がついてないかもしれないです。それはね、あの、他の人が聞いてる人や見てる人がどんどん変わってってるなっていうのを思うかもしれないし、自分の中では意
Did you try to put more emotion into it? Did you, were you cognizant of making changes for that, just those two moments? And also, which of the two deaths do you think was more important for the character? Not too much? No, not at all. Uh, it's, let's see. The first time we, we recorded Dragon Ball Z, I was a much younger actor. You know, I remember it's like 10 years in the past, and I feel like my, uh, my acting arsenal and my skills had improved exponentially over the years. So I'm not gonna say that I, that I, that I worked any harder on Kai, but I do believe that my skill set was greater on Kai than it was the first time around. It was, I didn't treat it any less seriously, but I felt like my, uh, my instincts were really refined at that point, and I was able to do more nuanced things with it than I was in the original. Uh, also with Kai, we were recording over a longer period of time, so as opposed to the original series, as he was talking about, you'd go in and record for 8, 10, 12 hours a day, uh, my voice wasn't as torn up as it, as it was in the original, so I don't know. Um, I, I, I feel like I, I just tried to make good choices like I would on any show. As for which, which death was more important to Vegeta, I think that I, I think anyone who's any, seen any footage of me talking about Dragon Ball before, the Majin Vegeta is my favorite part of the whole series. I think, I think Vegeta's death was more important to Goku uh, when he died at the hands of Frieza, because I kind of awoke Goku's sensibilities. But when Frieza died uh, against Boo, he sacrificed himself. That was his choice. Like, he chose to do that, and so I felt that that was really important for his character and really important for the beginning of this change. まあ、仕事ということだ。例えば、まあ、物事を行って失敗するということだと思うんですね。失敗してもまたやり直すことができる。2回目の人生は。で、また3回目でも、また違う、え、成功になって突き進んで。そういう意味では非常に幸せな男
I was about a week out, I needed to record the show, and like, I just wanted this to make it. But the engineers were like, hey, do you want to add an effect to his voice? Do you want to do something kind of interesting with it? And then suddenly one day I'm like, you know what? This, I gotta get Brian Drummond to do this. This would be amazing. Like, because the thing I, I've heard so many of you say to me when I come uh, to conventions is, you know, this is the, the thing of your childhood. This is, and a lot of you, I, I know how you must have felt when you were really young and you were six or seven, eight years old, and then the voice has just radically changed overnight, and you just had to kind of go, all right, I'm gonna deal with it. But the, the thought to actually put a copy of Vegeta on a voice that I originally copied, I thought was so bad. <laughs> And the idea of of giving fans of just that sound that they remember from their childhood was going to be such a profound thing. I couldn't I couldn't resist it, and it turned out better than I could have possibly imagined. It was so. It was uh, yeah, it was a fun call to get uh, Chris and I. You know, Dean tweeted a couple times back and forth about some stuff and. I think you mentioned a couple months earlier, hey, you know, maybe we, get, we should get together for beers. Or, or, or if something come up and you maybe want to do something, and I was like, ah, I don't know how that would work, and I'm not sure. And and, it, and, and as he said, it was short notice when, when he said, there's this part. He's kind of a, he's another Vegeta, sort of a purple slimy one. But yeah. he, and would you be interested? I said, yeah, you know, I'm on a lot of other shows, so I was trying to figure out how I would fit it in. And I mentioned, yeah, maybe I'll fly down to Dallas. And he's like, ah, I don't, we kind of need it like next week. <laughs> and I was like, oh, geez, like, and luckily I had a Monday, this was like a Wednesday or something, and I, and I called the studio I knew and said, guys, can I book you for one of your free studio spots Monday morning, uh, work it out, uh, Chris and his crew will get in touch with you, booked it for four hours, and I unfortunately didn't get any other gigs during that slot, I rolled in, in four hours, we banged it out, uh, Chris was, was on at the beginning of the uh, session, and then you had to take off, who tried to be home here? Raleigh, Raleigh Pickens. Yeah, okay, he's he, he, a great guy. And then we just had fun for four hours. I really wanted to make it uh, seem, uh, and, and I was actually glad, I, I remember I asked you, did you want me to sort of copy your uh, Vegeta, and that might be kind of funny, but no, no. I think you said, that, you know, I want this to be the original, the higher pitch, the, the one that the fans remember. I'm like, okay, we'll do that one. And that was, that was, that was Chris's thought. I might have gone the way toward closer to Chris's voice, but it was a great call to bring back the old school sound and uh, and just play with that. And it turned out he was better than I thought he would too. It was great. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I actually, uh, it was a sound studio called Cosmic that I called up where I've got friends there and I, like, and I think I was working there that week and I just went up and said, you guys got a free spell on Monday morning, I need something really fast, it's gonna be a patch from Dallas and they're like, yeah, we can do it and we put it together. So that, yeah, great studio, man, can we record most of it? Awesome. It's interesting because when you look at the production of the English dub, not every actor has to be in the studio at the same time, so sometimes it'll be recorded kind of out of order. Like Chris will do his lines Monday and then Eric will do his Wednesday. They could be in the same scene together. But in Japan, it's a different story. In Japan, oftentimes they all record together. Mr. Horikawa will be in the room with Masako Nozawa or whomever, and they'll do the scenes together. So my question is for Brian and Chris now, and Mr. Horikawa, but we'll start with Brian and Chris. Do you think it would be easier if you had the other person in the scene there for you to kind of method act off of, or is it not really a big deal? I would take that a hundred times to one every day to work off another actor. Um, I, I do a lot of shows that are pre where there's five, ten of us, uh, in a studio together, working on the, it's just the scripts in front of us, we don't have mouth flaps to match, we don't have times to match. You're creating every aspect of, uh, with the director of what's gonna happen in that scene. You put it all together and then, because so much of acting is reacting. And um, it's great for another character can say their dialogue and you can react to how they said that. But in, in dubbing, like, uh, like I said many times, I may go out and do all the genius lines, and I haven't, and, and the other characters haven't done theirs yet. So I have, I don't have anyone else's performance to react to. I can't even say, oh, can I hear what uh, what Peter did with uh, Goku? No, he hasn't come in yet. Oh, so 
I, I'm going to do a reaction line to something I haven't even heard yet. So you're you're just you have to make everything up. It's kind of like an actor working on green screen, which you can still do. You've got to react to something that doesn't exist that hasn't happened yet. Uh, most actors will far prefer to be able to work off another performer. So oh, if I had an opportunity to do Dragon Ball with the full cast in the room, you know, on a weekly basis, that would be unreal. It would just be a blast to do so much fun. Yeah. Many times I've filmed in performances, they say, can we come in, we're going to film you guys. 
and they film what we're doing with our faces when we're angry or we're, you know, we're joking or we're doing things, and they'll use the animators will use those to create the shows. And that's a that's a prelay environment. And if there was a prelay environment of Dragon Ball, oh, it, would, it would be amazing. Oh, it would be yeah. incredible. There's one thing certain that I really want to ask you. All right, again. Okay. Are, are you looking at the script while you're recording, or do you have all the lines memorized? Whoa, I, I haven't memorized a line in a really long time. <laughs> no, script no, on screen. Yeah, we, you see the script right here, and the screen's right behind it. You're basically just having to follow both things at one time. Now, same as you. Same yes, yeah. but yours sometimes comes in as not finished, but sometimes yours is like an animatic with the uh, mouth shape. Is that what happens sometimes? Or do you normally see the finished, completely finished episode?
Vegeta is one of my all-time favorite characters in animation. But not one of my all-time favorite characters to voice because it, of how difficult it was and is, for those who are still doing it, to do. It is extremely taxing and very hard on the vocal cords and um, dubbing work is far more difficult than prelay work, the precision that's involved. You have to work by yourself, not with a group, not as fun for me. I love working with people as opposed to alone. So that's where I put not as fun, but as far as character arc and who the character is, and the journey he's been through, he's at the top of my list of all-time favorite characters. So for, for viewing, that's why I know he is for you too. But for work, oh, it, when, when, when a when Dragon Ball session would show up on my calendar from my agent, it was usually something like, <laughs> that's what my head would do. And when, um, how long? You have two sessions of Dragon Ball Z next week. Oh my God. <laughs> can you put them on a Friday so I can have Saturday and Sunday to recuperate? That's sort of where I sit with, with Vegeta. It's really hard. And so I guess and maybe you're probably aware of that. Um, and I know going into a session that it's going to take all of my, uh, all the power I have to even get through it sometimes. But as a character, like it's hard for me to compare it to anything. He's connected with that character. I'd be nobody. I'd be nobody. <laughs> You're right, though. I don't know what I would be. And so it's so, it was such a, um, I don't know. I, it, it sucks to have to scream that loud and to know that I'm going to have flu-like symptoms the next day. Um, but, but Dragon Ball Z has given me so much that I don't have a choice. Because if I don't scream my butt off, Sean's going to scream better than I do, and I don't want that to <笑><笑>あの、まあ、役者っていうのは自分がやった役っていうのは愛さないといけないものなんですよ。どんなキャラクターであれ。で、もちろんあの、すべてのキャラクターを愛してるっていうのはすごくかっこよくは人と思うんですが、まあ、クリスマスペンギーもう何年も何十年もやってると、もう離れられないというか、どうしてもあの、そういう、なんていうのかな、長寿番組というか、になってくると、そこから離れることができないので、もう、どうしても付き合わなき
this scene was great, but um, just the moment where Vegeta does sacrifice himself and he puts his arm around his son. And, uh, I'm sorry. You have to have a heart of stone to play Vegeta, but it crushed me, man. Like, it just crushed me. And it was, it was a difficult emotional recording session because back in those days, we were working so hard to get the show on TV every week that we didn't even know what was happening. We didn't even have the materials up until the end of the show. So I didn't even know what was going to happen to Vegeta as things went along. So it was when he became a Super Saiyan, I was like, oh wow, that's awesome. And I think it, in a way, it's kind of the way that Ryo got to experience the series because he didn't know what the future was going to be either. We've had conversations about this. Like, one of the funniest things he ever said to me was, man, when I first started working on the show, I didn't even know if I was gonna make it 20 episodes because people die in the show. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man, it's, uh, th that was probably my favorite scene, yeah, easily. え、そうだ。僕もやっぱりあの、ここで発揮変わったと思う。今までの あの、マジンプートみたいな Like Chris, I have the, the same scene where Vegeta sacrificed himself against Majin Buu. Uh, at that time, we saw his heart change from how he had been before. The first time, he wasn't just fighting for himself, he was fighting for his family to protect people. And so he made that sacrifice. And especially at the moment when he said to Trunks that, I've never hold, held you before, let me hold you now. That was really amazing. Really enjoyed that. Yeah, like they said. <laughs> Honestly, I was probably, uh, in, in remembering work in different scenes, I was probably the giddiest school kid uh, in doing this four hours of Copy Vegeta recently. When I got to be back in the room and, and working on those scenes, I was just, this is, mostly because of what I knew was gonna happen. Like, this is gonna be, this is good. People are going to just love this, and I just thought Chris had such a great idea to do it. That's when I was probably the most pumped about an episode going, this could be fun. Oh, 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 oh you're going to like this. <laughs> so I could talk to these guys all night, but I'm not allowed to. We can't. We can't be here all night. But before we close out the Prince of All panels, I would like a special request. Uh, from Mr. Drum, Mr. Sabin, and Mr. Horikawa. We've seen you guys kill your vocal cords for decades and still live to tell about it. And we've seen Mr. Horikawa do Final Flash, but I want to do something a little bit different to close out this epic first, maybe last time ever, hopefully not, but it is the first time ever that you're all in the same room. Can we do a triple Big Bang attack? I mean, aren't we supposed to hear the Japanese of reference at first? I mean, it's not all At the same time? At, at the same time. In fact, in fact, it would be cool if they could stand next to each other and put their arms out. Like they're, like they're going to really down somewhere. Can we do that to close out? Let's go! I'm gonna be following you, okay? <laughs> um, 
I'm going to say, I'm going to say three, two, one, go, and then you go. All right, ready? All right. Okay. There we go. go. All right, three, two, one, go. Big bang. Oh! Thousands of tears later. Alright, so this is going to be the Dragon Ball concert. Everybody's sitting down. The stage is set. Now let us begin. Oh, shit. Oh my god, such a big fan. She's such a big fan, bro. <laughs>
right, so while at the convention, I managed to pick up some really cool art pieces, as you guys can see right now. Jiren, while he's about to fight, mastered Ultra Instant Goku, which I think looks pretty cool. The only downside is I don't really have any screen protectors for him or anything but i i definitely have to have that in my room so we have ourselves a full power jiren also, alongside jiren actually we also have hakai shin topo you gotta have topo because topo looks pretty cool if you just look at them side by side even though hakai shin topo is pretty fodder in comparison to what he did you can't deny like he just looks pretty badass so especially when he beat up frieza so we have ourselves hakai shin topo and then alongside that we have a regular jiren who just so happens to be powering up this was the uh, act during when he was fighting uh goku vegeta and seven alongside Frieza so again picked up a really cool art piece of Jiren but also alongside Jiren I picked up some really cool fan art of Thanos now as you guys can see as I move Thanos begins to change his facial expression he has no infinity gems now he does look at that that is sick that is absolutely monstrous we got that oh look it's Emish yeah. Now, also got a nice little art piece here of Mewtwo from the original Pokemon movie, which I always thought Mewtwo was badass. I don't know how Emish nice. feels, but no, he's, fucking awesome. he's fucking amazing. We got Mewtwo. But it, look, it transforms into armored Mewtwo. Of course, yeah. Like every single if time we move yeah, around. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. As you can see, armored Mewtwo when he first appeared. Regular Mewtwo. Then we got, oh God. Bekla. We have Kefuda. Bekla. We have Kale and Kalifla. And Bekla. then we have Kefla, or he calls her Bayfla for whatever reason, because he's just so infatuated with Kefla for whatever reason. But we turn that over and we have ourselves the ultimate fight, the future triple threat fight on the channel. Vegito versus Beerus versus Jiren, which is very controversial, but this is so cool. This is actually from y uh, Yakuza. Uh, he's an incredible artist. You guys may have seen him on Instagram and whatnot, but can't have that on your wall without having Jiren, Vegito, and Beerus. Jiren probably wins, by the way. Probably. Spoiler no spoiler. I don't know about that one. I'm, I'm pretty sure in this fight he probably would. But uh, these are all the art pieces for now until we pick up some more later on. So let's just see what happens. Jiren wins. Vegito wins. Wanker. Vegito wanker. I had to use an English term. Vegito wanker. <laughs> I'm a happy fat man. Who guts that? No matter my shape. Donuts. Big or muffin top. Someone out there will love every inch of me. I did it. Let's stop. Hey. Selfie. Selfie. You guys just take a good picture and stuff. Evil. Evil. It's Emosh, and next to him is... <laughs> Alright guys, so we're kicking back in the Omni Mandalay Hotel. It's really actually nice here, so I don't know what this guy's gonna do behind me. What are you doing? Are you gonna run around? Okay, of course you are. You know what's crazy? It's me, Mass Star sitting next to me, and some blithering buffoon running. Are you, uh, you know, no, keep running. Let, let's see how, let's see how long you can do this. I, let's see how long you can do you'd this. You'd be surprised, bro. No, I am gonna be surprised. I'm an athlete. You don't are know you? Who I am? Are you? Bro, I had a, well, back in the day, I had a 42 inch vertical leap, my dude. I have a 42 inch dick. Come on, man. I used to jump over <laughs> dudes like you for a little Yeah? Professionally, bro. Yeah? That's why you don't want to play me a ball, right? And then you got this guy hanging out. We can out. play right now. Yo, what's up, Mr. Mass? Hey, how's it going? How you doing? doing? He's gonna no, no, edit no. this out. No, 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 we no, 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 right no, 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 no anime war and when do you think the final episode will be because we know episode 7 isn't out yet as of this recording but just giving Spoiler a rough alert. estimate where do you see how far do you see anime wars going like where do you see what is the anime war yeah what is that i don't know yeah, just no. yeah. <laughs> Man, I, I don't know. I've seen spoilers. 10 episodes was the goal. It might be 11 now. Maybe it'll be 12. Because it's a lot, it takes a lot longer to tell the story than I usually plan because things just get drawn out. They take a lot of time. Um, and when it'll be done, uh, honestly, I don't know. Episode 7 was like just for the fans because that's what everybody wants to see. 
And after this, I'm gonna start doing my own show, Demon Rush, and some other things. So uh, I'm not killing the series, but it's just, I gotta shelf it so that I can have Move ensure long-term survival yeah. for Master Media. So for those of you out there who don't know what Demon Rush is, this man talked about this like probably three years ago, I would say. So you guys have about maybe four to five solid episodes left to enjoy for Anime War, and then, the debut of Demon Rush. Know. So yeah, that could be oh, who knows. Maybe you got actually if you can show enough support, maybe we can get this man to do like twenty episodes of Anime War. Or thirty episodes. Oh yeah? I'm not I'm like dude every episode of Anime War like ages me like five years, bro. I can't Yeah, I saw this guy at New Year's, he was <laughs> one person and I see him at Comedia Con, he's another. I'm like, Master, is that you? Hi. I'm like literally dying. I'm literally dying from but we're just we're just chilling at the hotel. It's a pretty nice hotel. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of a of a tour on my second channel and just give you guys a little bit of a rundown of what this is like. Um, interesting developments. Um, I have some information that I cannot reveal, but there's gonna be a, a lot of changes for KameCon too. Um, that includes the following people you see in this you know little lobby here. Um, very important roles. I want I want to thank you all. No no I want to thank you all so much for supporting myself and the other content creators. That means a lot to us. Um, there's, there's been a lot of people that met Master Media, fanboying out for his anime war. Lots of fans that met me, fanboying over my stuff, and I really appreciate that. Lots of people that recognized Emish because of his voice. Oh shit, you hate Topo, I love you too, man. Fuck, you know, and then he got beat by one guy from Shadowverse, which I am never gonna stop bragging about, because this guy thinks he's, he gets- Where's Shadowverse? Not Shadowverse, Pokemon Showdown. That's yeah. when I first came back. Yeah, he beat your ass. Actually, though. he beat me once. He beat I your smoked ass. him like every yeah. other game. Yeah, is that what happened? It's yeah. true. I'm dead serious. Yeah, that's ass smoke. That's what happened. Yeah, it's Nagel. I mean, I could take a L. I don't mind. Oh, there's actually a spy um, outside in the garden. Uh, we call him Schmeagel. Yeah. Little squirrel. There's a little squirrel thing running around. It's like a little uh, garden squirrel. So. I gotta go kill him. I have to go kill him before anything. So we're gonna check you guys out for the uh, rest of the hotel tour. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear John and Savannah. Happy birthday to you. Woo! us on the plane together so hopefully nothing goes wrong but uh how do you feel a lot of people miss their flights actually uh, so, just no fly <laughs> i don't give a fuck you put it on no, i'm not even talking shit hopefully hopefully no, 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 uh, with all due respect it's just legitimately funny because i missed my flight on the way to texas so I, think I, I thought I was gonna miss mine. The line was like crazy long, actually. But this plane is so much better. It's yeah, it's way better. Big, like it's big. Like it's plane of twenty. So, we I, just woke I, up and left the hotel. I'm missing. I'm missing an armrest though. I don't know what the hell happened to my armrest. It's, it's like gone. Like someone just like tore it off out of rage. 